My name is Jake Thompson with Compete Every Day, and today I'm going to be interviewing U.S. Olympian Ryan Lochte on mental toughness, what it takes to build an Olympian's mindset, and his historic career. So Ryan, biggest question of today, what's the best thing you had from Whataburger? Oh, the buttermilk chicken biscuit. Oh, man, my mouth is watering right now. <laughs> First time That's at good. Whataburger too, right? First time okay. at Whataburger. So you've been introduced to Texas properly. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you've had a historic Olympic career, but at what age did you decide you wanted to go to the Olympics? Probably when I first started swimming, um, I wanted to go to the Olympics at uh, the age of eight. Um, I was watching the 1992 Olympic Games. And um, the 100 meter butterfly Pablo Morales for the United States won gold. And I just remember him watching it on my TV, watching him touch the wall, celebrating, congratulating all the other swimmers, um, good sportsmanship, and then walking around the pool deck, signing autographs, taking pictures with the fans. And I was like, you know what? I want to be just like him. And that's when my dreams of going to the Olympics started. I love it. So what inspired you at first, I would say, to start swimming? Um, both. Uh, so I grew up um, in upstate New York, and both my... Um, parents were swim coaches so I mean I was brought up basically on the pool deck so I mean you can kind of say I have chlorine in my veins <laughs> um, so I've, I've always been around the pool deck and honestly I kind of just fell into the sport and just fell in love with the water like I could be having the worst day of my life and as soon as I go in the water everything just disappears I'm at home so you you grew up around it you knew from a really early age you wanted to go to the Olympics, but there's obviously a large gap between knowing you want to <laughs> yes. go and, and making it. <laughs> what point do you think, or do you remember feeling like, I actually have a shot that I could be an Olympian? So that, that feeling didn't happen until my freshman year of college. Okay. Um, I guess you can say I was a late bloomer. <laughs> Um, I mean, I was thankful enough I got a full ride scholarship at the University of Florida. Um, I started off rocky. Um, you, were, you, you mentioned and, uh, earlier you were pretty slow. Yeah, on. I was pretty slow. I mean, I had girls lapping me in swim practice, <laughs> so I wasn't doing so hot. Um, but um, as like the months went on, I started getting better. I started growing. I started getting stronger. And after my freshman year, I was like, you know what? I think I can make my, a name for myself in the sport. Um, and then I just kept on getting better and better. And I was just going off that momentum. And, and after my sophomore year of college, I made the Olympic team in Athens and I won my first gold and um, silver medal. Love it, I love it. The, the Olympics always amaze me because y'all trained for years. For that moment yeah. and a lot of people train for those years and, and they get to the trials and never make the olympic team you did and so you have this childhood dream of, of becoming an olympian you get to this point take me inside like what was going through your mind for that very first race in athens like what was going through your head were you nervous were you excited <laughs> were you overwhelmed like what was that like <laughs> funny story because my par my my family was there and so right before I was walking out to swim the finals of, my, of the, the race that we got gold in, in the relay, I went to my sister and I was like, hey, do you have 70 euros? And she's like, what? Like, are you nervous? Like, wh why do you need 70 euros? I was like, I want to get a box of like Cuban cigars for like after swimming. She's like, Ryan, like get your head in the game. Like, but that's me. Like, I have to not think about swimming. The more relaxed I am, the more like me and you just hanging out, chilling, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break a world record or something. Like I just got to be really relaxed. How did you learn that about yourself? Um, ever since I was little. Um, I, I never took, see swimming, see I love the sport of swimming. And, but I don't let it define who I am because there's so much more to me than just swimming. So I don't, like if I have a bad race, I'm not going to be like, I'll be upset for that split second, but then I'm like, uh, got to move on. Got to keep moving forward. Um, and that's what, how I approached my whole swimming career. And that's how I kept on, was so motivated. I keep going forward, keep um, pushing myself. 
because there's a lot of um, athletes that like if they have a bad performance they dwell on it for so long that they can't move forward yeah i find that really fascinating because a lot of times we struggle to separate what we do from who we are and you mm-hmm. just so perfectly said like it it was something you did and, and you weren't allowing that to define you which yeah. probably allowed you to be pretty resilient dealing with any adversity throughout your life you'd say oh yes yeah so of all of the olympic experiences and races and trips what do you think has been your most memorable <laughs> i was talking to justin in the car earlier about this and out of all the so in the the olympic village they have a mcdonald's stand and it's all you can eat mcdonald's and it's free that by far is like getting a gold medal <laughs> i'm like wow and how many calories did you eat at a time when you were swimming so all right so <laughs> in beijing olympics um in the olympic village in the cafeteria they have all the stands from different countries and i kn- what i knew was mcdonald's so I had breakfast, lunch, and dinner, eight days straight, and like I broke, I got my first individual gold medal and broke a world record doing that. So that was a lot. <laughs> now I know in the real world, McDonald's has different menus in different countries. Was yes. it the same at the Olympics? Oh yes. Okay. Yes. yes. So what was the best thing you remember from McDonald's that was not say something we'd find here in Texas? Ah, uh, so I think I was in. I was in Rome and I went to a McDonald's and they had beer there, which in the States, you don't have that in no. McDonald's. I'm like, this is kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> we should well, have Nice. <laughs> we should have that in the States. <laughs> so let's talk in Olympics. If you had to start your career all over, flashing back to back when you were in college, you're getting ready to start this Olympic career. What's one thing you would have done differently on a second time around? Hmm. What's one thing I would have done differently? Probably um, watch what I ate better. I mean, I had, we had a nutritionist, but I always had like, I love soda, I love sweets. So I always like indulged in that. If I paid more attention, I think I would have been a better um, athlete. Um, just because, you know, what you put in your body does have an effect on your overall personality, like your your attitude and your performance. And I think I would just been a whole better all around athlete. But we can still enjoy some ice cream now, right? Oh yes, Uh, I'm on break right now. So (laughs) Dairy Queen, here we come. (laughs) We talked earlier about how Olympians, you train for years for the moment opportunity. What I think most people miss about that is is really the mundane work of every day, hours in the pool, doing the same thing day after Mm -hmm. day after day for, that one moment how do you and how did you stay focused on what do i need to do today for this long-term goal because i think most people today get caught up in just a quick win versus being willing to do the boring work day after day mm-hmm. for that olympic size goal see that boring work wasn't boring to me it was fun because i had a because ch- the way why i love swimming was i i'm very competitive and i love to race and I was able to race in practice every single day with the swimmers I was swimming with. So I just like, I'd make games out of practice, whether I'd, I'd race you in warm up or warm down, like I, I was just always racing. And I just loved it, that excitement. Um, so, and I never, I always treated each um, competition, each swim meet, like it was when I was eight years old where if you win, you get like a ribbon or a little bag of candy, like when you're a kid. So I uh, approached every swim meet, whether it was the Olympics, Olympic trials, or just a swim meet that I had in Gainesville, Florida. Um, I approached everyone the exact same. So it didn't like, I didn't get like, I didn't get too excited and throw me off my game um, at the Olympics. So I was just really calm and just having fun. I love it. Have, and it, obviously we do better the more fun we're having yep. doing it. There's a lot of people probably watching this, listening to this, that are striving for big goals themselves. Some are going to reach those goals. Mm-hmm. Some may not. In your career, you have gold medals, you have silver medals, you have bronze medals. You, you've got it all. A lot of people only focus on the gold. And a lot of athletes only focus on that gold. And so I'm curious from your standpoint, what it was like to come up short of a gold and get, say, a silver or bronze, but obviously understanding you just 
demolished everybody else in the world. Yeah. How did you, I, I would say first, how did you handle that emotionally? Because you separated who you are from what you do. Were you still able to take pride in that medal, even though maybe it wasn't the medal you wanted? Um, when you find out, when you touch the wall and you find out if you won or not, um, there's been, I mean, yes, I've gotten silver, bronze. Mm -hmm. I was pissed. I mean, that's the competitive edge yeah. that we have, that competitive instinct that we want to win. Um, but I don't dwell on it. Like, I see I'm pissed, and if it doesn't happen or it does, like, I just move on. I forget about it. I could win a gold medal, break a world record. I'll be so excited, but then within a minute, I'll be, ah, all right, got to move on. Got to keep moving forward. And that's, what stayed, um, that's why I stayed in swimming for so long, because it didn't do well. Like, I didn't have, like, baggage on me. Like, I was just keeping moving on and just having fun. How did you carry that same mentality or, or was it more difficult after winning gold to stay motivated to keep going? Because a lot of times we get a little complacent, we yes. relax after winning. Um, I think winning helped me more because I was more motivated because that feeling yeah. that like just I just got a gold medal. Like I'm the best right now in the world. And it makes you like being like, you know what, I want to do it again. I want to do it again so that and you just feed off it um and that's what i did and then the times that i don't win i feed off that because you know what i'm pissed i don't want that to happen again i want to go for that gold i love it you shared this year i know after missing team usa on this last olympics that you'd put a lot of pressure on yourself and mm -hmm. it was mostly just you putting that pressure on yourself how do you balance applying pressure to yourself to perform with not wanting to perform tight or uptight throughout? So I used to be really good at that. I mean, swimming in the Michael Phelps era, um, I always had the pressure and me being the one out of it that no one else could do was beat him. Um, so I had that pressure, but it could go through one ear out the other. Like I was just myself, just, hey, I'm here to swim, just have fun. Um, up until this last year, um, I just, I put it on myself. Um, it was something that I wanted to do. I wanted to prove everyone, everything that's happened through my past. I wanted to prove everyone that like, you can do it. It doesn't matter what age you are. And once you get knocked down in life, like you can get, big, you can get back up and keep going. Um, so I wanted it, I think I wanted it so much for everyone like all the people, like random people coming up to me and being like, hey, do it for the old guys. Like things like that. Like I actually took it to, I was like, you know what, I got to do this. Um, and I think all that pressure, I actually held on to it and I was carrying it. And what was cr crazy is right before Olympic trials, I was doing times that would have demolished my world record in like practice and stuff. And when I got to the meet, I just had all this pressure that I just fell short. And I was like, well, I was like, Shh. like I failed. Um, and that's the hardest thing that I'm kind of dealing with now um, is I felt like I, I failed. I think all of us at, at one point or another, whether, you know, high school, college, or you have just an incredible career that you did, the sport always ends before we're ready for it to. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter who you are. I mean, even Tom Brady, if he plays till he's 50, it, it's going to end before he's ready to. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that you mentioned earlier has probably helped you throughout this process of separating what you do from who you are. Mm -hmm. Because who you are is Ryan Lochte. What you did was swim at a very elite level. Mm. And so the people that have those connected really struggle. And so it, it's really encouraging to hear you talk about the separation already, which would help you through this. Now that the chapter's starting to turn in your life, how do you plan to stay competitive? It sounds like it's in you. I mean, I think it's something that's always in, like once you're a, com like you have that competitive instinct, that drive, um, it's stuck in you, no matter what. Even if I take off swimming for like 10 years and come back, it's still there. Um, but right now, I have a different motivation. I have kids, I have a family. <laughs> uh, I just, I'm, I'm the happiest I've ever been. And it's because of the family. That's awesome.
It's, it's rare that you hear an Olympian who's been at the highest of the game talk about just the happiest you've ever been was not holding the medal, but oh. like with the kids. I mean, that, that was like a cherry on top. Tell but, us about your family. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I could talk all day about them. <laughs> um, so I have a four-year-old boy, Caden, um, and a two-year-old girl, Liv, and a beautiful wife, uh, Kayla. And it's everything I ever wanted, like that I could dream of. And it happened. And every day is just something new with those kids. I'm like, can you guys please stop growing so much? You guys are growing up too fast. Um, but I love it. Like, and now that I'm taking my break right now from swimming for a little, I have, I'm spending so much time with them. Like doing like, thing, like dad things, like teaching my son how to like put a nail in a board and like put together a garden bed that I'm make, we're making for my wife. Like things like that, like that I couldn't really do when I was in so much hard training. Now I have that freedom, I'm just, I'm just happy. I love it, that's awesome. One of the things I'm always fascinated by with you and your story is really your focus and, and mentality. And the reason I say that is I know there was a lot of things that went on around Rio and, and we don't have to get into that, but mm -hmm. it probably felt like most of the world was out to get you or against you. And yeah. for you to maintain focus when so many things outside of your control were turned against you, curious how you just remained optimistic and focused on what you could control and what you could do because I feel like a lot of people, even more so the last two years, are so distracted and so frustrated by things outside of their control mm -hmm. and, and they don't have people coming after them yeah. like you did. How do you focus on your family and what keeps you, you know, happy and optimistic while it feels like the world kind of caves in around you? So I, I had to lean towards my family to do that. And they're the ones that helped me because I was getting eat up inside because I care so much about everyone. Um, and when I would read comments of like little kids, they would like, I read a comment of someone saying like, you used to be my hero and now you're not like that killed me. Um, and then I'd turn to my family and my wife would be like, that's not you. Like, that's not who you are. Like you got to keep moving. So I turned to my family and they're the ones that helped me. I love it. The, and, and family is so incredibly important. As someone that's in the limelight all the time, social media can be, obviously you just mentioned brutal. the comments, brutal. Brutal. How do you, because you're incredibly active on Instagram, I follow yeah. you, and, and we talked offline earlier, I was talking with some of the team about just how toxic it can be, and it's not really why it's intended to be used that way. Mm. How do you control your relationship with social media, and how do you hope hopefully one day your kids control their relationship? See, with the whole media thing, I my personal thing is, I think it's only gonna get worse. Like you can't, you're not gonna even like, if you take a picture of like you eating an apple, like something, something bad is gonna like. Oh, so you hate oranges? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's gonna get worse, I feel like. Um, so I'm afraid for like my kids to be wrapped up in the social media th world. Um, but I mean, it's the way the world, like how it's moving. Um, we try not to let them get involved in that. Um, we try to keep them outside, like away from like TVs, away from iPads, yep. like things like that. Um, but yeah, I just have, it's, it's gonna get worse and worse. How about for you personally, how do you manage, cause you have a very public brand. You're an oh, Olympian. I, how do you manage <laughs> having an account with not getting caught up in the comments? Um, I just don't read the comments. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, because after 16, I stopped reading comments. I was like, this is, it's gonna kill me if I keep reading these comments. Um, th I don't get those anymore, thankfully. Um, but I mean, I'm like, my wife, Kayla, I'm like, hey, um, she's like, she, cause she, do she does that um, Instagram, like all that kind of stuff. She's like, hey, you should do like this little video. It'll be fun. Like everyone would love it. And I'm like, all right. So I do it like, so she's like, kind of like the brains of the operation. <laughs> <laughs> she, you don't see her like get lit up if somebody makes a comment. She's like, I'm going to show them. Oh no, she would. <laughs> she'll go in after them. Like, oh, she'll, she'll attack them. I'm like, babe, like, just let it go. She's like, oh no, no, I won't. <laughs> So <laughs> well, one of the reasons we're here today, Eubank has it created this incredible opportunity for us to hang out and have this conversation. Yeah. And, and I know something that's important to both of us is just financial responsibility. Yes. 
what was it like for you growing up? Did your family talk about like financial literacy and responsibility or, or was that kind of a foreign concept to you? So I was talking with Justin in the car just now on the way over here that we never, I was never brought up with that. Didn't know anything. And even when I went pro, no one ever told me like I had money coming in. Like I didn't know how much money was in my bank account. I couldn't have told you. I just knew that I was still swimming. So money was coming in, I guess. And, that, and if I buy like a new car, I didn't have anyone saying, what the hell are you doing? Like, why? You don't need four cars. Yeah. At one point I had six cars. Why? One for you. Like, no, you don't. Like, it was, it, I was just being stupid and I had no one to help me. One of, uh, I, I had a pretty similar I would say financial roller coaster in my career, early in my career. And I mean, that's been a decade now and, and your career has been even longer than that. What's one thing that you know now that you wish you'd known starting your Olympic career in finances? Money management. Like, honestly, um, I honestly, once I started going pro and started getting all these sponsors and money coming in, I wish someone would sat me down and told me about everything about the financial world like because i honestly i couldn't tell you how much money i had in my bank account what? and like do like writing a check like i didn't do any of that because I, I had pe i paid people to do it for me so all i did was swim and be me like i wish someone would have taught me and i know you went through some rocky times not too terribly long ago and, and essentially started over What's one thing you were pretty intentional about with that second start in terms of your finances? Being more aware of what's going on, um, actually being involved. Um, I think, but I didn't have anyone because I already, I just kind of knew and trusted them being like, all right, here's my money, like do whatever. Um, but knowing now, uh, being like actually involved with my finances and knowing what's coming in, what's going out, and just money management. Um, I just wish it happened a lot earlier. <laughs> we we all do. Shannon and I were laughing offline earlier about how you know it doesn't matter if you're 40, 50. Like you can start saving, you can start doing your money wisely, yep. you can start working a budget. It's never the too late. Some of us start later than we wish we had, yes. but doesn't everybody. You all wish you started 10 years ago, but the best chance is today. Why not use today? Yeah. What's your biggest focus right now that your swimming career is on break in regards to managing your money more responsibly? Um, not eating fast food as much. <laughs> 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 um, no, and just not the splurging. Um, I don't have the same amount of income coming in as when I was swimming. So, I mean, I, I don't have the freedom of just, you know, if I want a new watch, oh, I'll just go get a new watch. I don't have that luxury right now. Um, so it's like money management and just, you know, um, protecting, protecting my family in that sense of protecting my finances, meaning protecting my fa family. Like the more money I save, it's gonna help my family in the long run. Well, and, and the first so step So basically is everything is, for them. Yeah. Well, and, and you've made the, the most important first steps, which is identifying and being more involved with it and knowing yeah. what's going on versus, you know, when we don't know, like you talked about early in your career, we can't help it. We can't influence. We don't set our kids up for success and yeah. if, if we don't know what's going on. Switching gears, talking about your kids, I know you're incredibly passionate about the next generation of swimmers and being yes. involved. What are you currently doing with you swimming? Um, so... I'm, um, me and, um, so I'm in part of, um, all sport pro camps, um, which is swimming, it's swim clinics, um, not just in the United States, all over the world. So all over the world, I'm going to be able to teach kids how to swim. Like how freaking amazing is that? Like I get goosebumps thinking about it because I, I love kids so much and I just love, I'm so passionate about the sport of swimming and teaching the young, the next generation is amazing and i just want to make swimming bigger than what it was where or what it is where's the next place you're going to be doing one of those camps oh uh, i think the next one we're working on is bahamas 
So you get to so the Bahamas, not, not a bad place yeah. to be. <laughs> you get to the Bahamas, and there is a 10-year-old Ryan Lochte there. Oh, what there, do you, you tell you that? You know there will be. What would you tell that 10-year-old Ryan Lochte? Um, so I always have this thing, um, these three guidelines that I do, always say in my swim clinics that I do, is kind of three guidelines that I followed throughout my whole swimming career and got to where I'm at right now. Um, one, listen to your coaches. Your coaches are there to help you. They've probably been coaching longer than those kids have been swimming, and they're there to help. So if they say, like, take four kicks off the wall, actually do it. Don't do it just that practice so you don't get in trouble. Like, actually listen to them and do that. Um, second one is make sure you set short-term and long-term goals. Like, when I was swimming growing up, I set short-term goals every day in practice whether it was making sure I was in tight streamline off every wall or making sure my hands were entering every stroke. So you always had those little goals because those little things are gonna add up. And then you have those big long-term goals, which is making the Olympic team, getting a gold medal. So every day when you go to that swimming pool, you had a purpose. You were there to do something. And then the third one, the most important one, is to have fun. You know, that's what life is all about, is having fun. And why wouldn't you want to have fun? So recap those three again for us. Have fun, ha set goals. Have fun, set short-term, long-term goals, and listen to your coach. Sounds like the type of advice people could use from a financial standpoint. Exactly. Of trusted advisor, get to know your banker, get to know your team. Mm -hmm. Short-term goals, putting 15, 20 bucks a, a week away, just put it away in an account, helps mm -hmm. you get those long-term goals for a new vehicle, new home, anything mm -hmm. like that. And then most of all, have fun, make it a game. Yep. Make it a family gathering, piggy bank. I'm sure you, your kids have a piggy bank around the house. Oh, no, they in. have like a, it was actually the, you know, the Cuban cigar box. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> my kid, my son, he has the, the cigar box and that's where it like, I'm like, all right, now if you go around like the backyard and pick up our dogs like poop in his poop bags, like you're gonna get 25 cents. I mean, I might have to start raising it up I'll more. Say inflation's because now, coming. No, 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 yeah. Because he's like, man, 25 cents ain't gonna get me that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, he's learning that at a young age now. And yeah, it's that cigar box. He has that little cigar box. I love it, I love it. Uh, that, that's such a fun way to tie your journey in with where their journey is starting for a lot of sense. Yeah. So on that same note, working with youth, what's something you wish parents of young swimmers knew? I had a unique thing because both my parents were swim coaches. So at the pool deck, like I can't say like, once we set foot on the pool deck, I was like, hey mom, hey dad, like what are we doing? Like I couldn't say that, it was coach, coach. And then as soon as we left the pool deck, it was mom and dad, it wasn't coach and we never talked about swimming because I hated talking about swimming outside the, port, um, outside the pool because I left everything there. Um, and I had, so I had two different lifestyles and that's what helped me throughout my whole swimming career because, and that's why I was able to train and swim for so long is because I had that two different lifestyle and I see other parents that are so involved and in, into their, like their kids, like, sport that they get the the kid gets burned out or starts hating it like after a couple of years um just because it's like they're getting so much from home that like the the parents are there just to be like support being like hey you can do it just keep going you got this like motivation like that positive um so i would just say like for the parents, just back off. <laughs> just, be, just be parents and yes, let the coaches yes, coach. Yep. I love it. So w finally, just kind of wrapping this up, we're wrapping up 2021 right now, mm -hmm. and we've got three months left, three and a half months left. What has you excited finishing this year, starting next year? What has you, Ryan Lochte, so excited about in the future? Um, honestly, I think we're, we might be having another kid. Congratulations. Well, no, well, no, no, it's not like for sure, yeah. but that's what we want. Awesome. So I think going into 2022, who knows? We might have number three. Might have number three. Well, awesome, man. I appreciate you making some time to hang out with us today. Yes, thank you. Ryan, who's your bank of choice? Eubank, the best in the business. Come on. Thank you, Eubank, for setting up today's interview and this conversation with U.S. Olympian Ryan Lochte.